Thank you, Kevin. As the late uh, Bob Johnson said, uh, it's a great day for hockey, and specifically it's a great day for hockey in Nashville, Tennessee, and for the Predators. Um, at the end of the season, we've talked a lot about uh, our main objective uh, this summer was to bolster our offense, and we've done that today. Uh, Matt Duchesne is a player that we have liked for a long, long time, uh, but whether it's through deals that he went to Ottawa or Columbus, we just were not able to acquire him, but we have today. Uh, Matt and his wife Ashley and their young son uh, Bo came to Nashville this week. Uh, they had a thorough visit with Nashville, uh, touring the city, uh, the outlying areas. Uh, they met with uh, our coaches and specifically our head coach Peter Lavalette for a long time to discuss where Matt fit into our system and where he would play. Uh, he also met with uh, management and he also met with uh, the business side with uh, Sean Henry to understand what uh, the Predators are all about and what some of our initiatives are for our players. Uh, very similar to Ryan Ellis uh, last summer, uh, Matt saw that we have something special here between the franchise, the city and the community and uh, the good news for us is that he wanted to be part of it. Uh, as we know he's a big country fan, he's passionate about our, uh, uh, he's very passionate about our city and I think uh, those things obviously make a, a good fit, even a better fit. Uh, on the hockey side, Matt's coming off his best season. He scored 31 goals, 70 points. That would have made him the Predators' leading scorer last year. In his career, he surpassed uh, the 20-goal mark seven times, and he's got 65 or more points three times. Uh, he also had 15 power play goals over the last two seasons, and is probably one of the best uh, face-up men in the National Hockey League. Internationally, he's won eight gold medals, including an Olympic gold and a World Cup. Further in our mission to bolster our offense, uh, we signed Daniel Carr. Uh, Daniel is a competitive offensive player. Last year he was the AHL's MVP. Uh, he scored 30 goals, 71 points in only 52 games. And we think Daniel is ready to become a full-time NHL player and uh, to have an impact specifically on our offense uh, next, next season. So that's the few remarks on the two players we signed, so I'm open for questions. David, knowing how long you coveted Matthew what was your reaction and how did you feel when you received word that he'd be coming here? Um, it, was, it was good. I mean, it, it, it felt like uh, if, if anything was ever going to happen, we were going to get Matt Duchesne. It was talked about in media the last three years. It made no secret, I think, that we were trying to get him. He made no secret that he had an affinity for the, uh, for the, uh, for the, for the city. Uh, having said that, just to get everything uh, on balance here, I mean, he did have other offers and he did visit other, other, other cities. I would think probably when you talk to him, he'd tell, tell you now that this is the only place he wanted to play. Maybe that's, maybe that's me wanting to think that, but it's, it's still part of a negotiation. And like I said, the, the, the meetings with he and his wife were, were great and, uh, you know, get to talk to him and hear, you know, a lot about his hockey career and a lot about him knowing him as a person, just again for the record. Uh, I've seen Matt Duchesne play a lot of hockey. I've seen him be here in Nashville, um, you know, playing the All-Star game. But until this week, I have never met Matt Duchesne. I have nodded to him many, many times <laughs> along the way, but I have never met Matt Duchesne. So I think that was a great, great process to get to know each other. The, as I said, he met with Lavi uh, by himself. And, uh, I, you know, I said, okay, Lavi, why don't you guys meet for 15 or 20 minutes? And then we're waiting, and it's an hour later, and they're still talking. Uh, we went out for dinner, and Lavi was part of that. During the dinner, Matt gets up and asks Lavi, can you talk to me for a second? They're gone for another 45 minutes just talking about the, the game. So, I mean, he wanted to know whether this was a fit for not only he and his wife off the ice, but obviously very important for him that it was a fit for him on the ice as a, as a hockey player. David, the, the price that you pay, how satisfied are you with that? Because there are, you know, there are wildly varying reports about what it might cost to get him. What, what, how do you feel about the value of it? Well, again, just again, like Ryan Ellis and our approach to any player here is that we have a framework that we're trying to work with. I mean, it doesn't always work, and uh, we, we try our best to, to pay players fairly, but to try to keep the team together. And uh, believe me, in every pitch that we have, and uh, any player that we're trying to sign, it's like we'd like to keep the, the, the team together. We'd like to be competitive every year. I mean, um, in my being interviewed by Matt Duchesne, he asked me questions. What I try to say to him is my goal every year is that I can get to training camp and I can look all the players in the eye and say, we have a competitive team. We have a team that has a chance that, sh that should definitely make the playoffs. And if we make the playoffs, then you and us all have a chance to compete for the Stanley Cup. And that all goes into the sales pitches of the 
negotiation. Do you think you can them for that low price? I, I, I hope both sides are, are happy. Do you have a plan B at all, or were you as committed to signing this one player as you've ever been in the start of the Yeah, I, I had a plan B and C, but plan A was here and plan B and C was over here, so I'm really glad that we didn't have to go down that road. What do you think are his kind of unique skills, unique assets, and, and how does that change the game going forward? Speed and offense. Uh, again, I think it's the, the game as we see it now is getting faster and faster. Duchesne is clearly one of the most explosive uh, centers in the league. I think he creates a lot of things by himself. Uh, but uh, you, you know, talking to him, he's very happy that he scored 31 goals, but he thinks he's equally, if not better, as a as a playmaker. Um, it, again, it's no secret that in the last couple of years our secondary scoring and last year for the first time the power play wasn't where we wanted it to be. I mean, I don't know who out there other than maybe Panarin or something would be a guy that could have, could add more more goals or more points or uh, help our power play as much as Matt Duchesne and clearly, uh, uh, I mean, right now looking at, a you know, have competition in our, our team at all positions and depth on our team at all positions, but it was feels to me right now, based on the signing and where we are, that the one-two punch at uh, center race to start off with is going to be uh, Joey and Duchesne. What does that mean for Kyle Harris? Well, I knew that was going to be the next question. So as I was saying that, I was thinking, well, again, it's, you're, you're, open, you're open for it. I mean, Duchesne, I, we want to be at center. He wants to be at center, but he has played a lot of left wing. Um, I mean, Kyle, we're certainly looking for as a, a rebound a year. There's nothing like, uh, you know, competition that should get the best out of out of everybody, so I'm I'm glad where we where we are. You we got to we got to play it out. We got to see where it all plays out. I mean, there's other guys that are vulnerable too in the in the lineup with you know Daniel Carr. I mean, we signed him. We believe in him. We want to play and get more offense than we did last year. So other other guys are going to be vulnerable here. Um, by my count, we probably have 15 NHL forwards on our team right now. Be comfortable heading into next season with as much money tied up down the middle that you're going to have with, with Johansson and. Um, we're right. Uh, we're right at the cap. I mean, that's uh, that's the way we're we're operating uh, now, and you know we've got to be very careful with our, our dollars and where we where we spend. I mean, um, you know, it is it is what it is. I mean, we've had a, a really good team for the last four or five years, and we've signed a lot of players to longer term contracts and obviously higher contracts than they previously had, and it feels like we're in a good position, but. Uh, we're under the cap and we're ready to go. Is this basically the return for the Subban trade, David Nimmer? I mean, some people say, oh, they aren't going to get enough for Subban, but basically that yeah. cap's fake. Yeah, I think uh, it, let's, let's call it like it is. If we don't make the Subban trade and get rid of his money, we're, it's going to be much more difficult to uh, get into the Duchesne sweepstakes, if you will. Uh, maybe we could have, and if we did today, then I'd be sitting here to answer the question on the cap. We'd be over the cap today, and we'd, we'd be having some uh, some player, a player or players that we would have to, to move. So that really, uh, I guess you'd say, took the pressure off, if you will, in the terms of uh, doing this. So yeah, Subban for um, for uh, Duchesne sounds like a reasonable way to say it. Uh, the good news is. is we feel with Dante Fabro coming in that we're really hoping maybe he can't replace uh, PK right away, but he certainly has the potential of being a top uh, four uh, defenseman. And with Roman, Ellie, and Eki there as our top three, I think we still have a really good uh, defense. And we also did get a couple of uh, you know younger players for PK Santini should play for us uh, next year. We got to see this Jeremy Davies for the first time at our development camp, and he looks like a, a player that I would certainly have been happy to have drafted and eventually signed and now traded for. He's got a lot of jump to his game. And he also went to uh, Northeastern University, which is very <laughs> close to me. So, And since Anthony Batetto, it might be time to get another Northeastern player on our team eventually. And plus, we got two second round picks. I think at the trade deadline, you said it's uh, arguably the, the most talented uh, Predators lineup that you'd ever put on the ice. I feel like this lineup now, it, as it stands, more talented than. Yeah, I'm optimistic. I mean, with uh, you know Johansson uh, uh, and, and Duchesne and Kyle Turris at, at center ice, I mean, this should give us the best chance to be much better offensively than we were last year, and, and hopefully we'll make a difference in getting us into the playoffs, and hopefully it'll make a difference for um, 
uh, having success in the playoffs, and again, almost as important, uh, hopefully to make a significant uh, difference in our power play, which again, uh, was there's a, we had a lot of good things going for us last year that I, I felt were you know uh, equal, if not better, than a lot of the top teams in the league. The one outlier was the amount of goals we scored in our power play, and if we've improved on that with these two signings, um, I think we're, we're headed in the right direction. David, in speaking about the framework that Ryan Ellis and Matthew Shane had to work within the sign and keep this team competitive, do you still do you still have the confidence that Roman Yossi with those negotiations is in the same frame of mind when it comes to eventually signing? Well, time will tell. <laughs> we've, you know, we've had a good relationship with uh, Roman, first of all. I mean, uh, you know, Roman would be the first one to tell you that he wants to stay in, in, uh, in, in Nashville, and we've you know, right, right back at you that we're telling him we're going to do everything. Uh, Brian and I met with uh, his agents up in uh, Vancouver, and you know we're trying to forge a relationship there. And now that we're finished, I think we're pretty well finished signing everybody. Uh, we can start a more serious negotiation going forward because we know where the dollars are, if you will, for this year, and you know we can predict a little bit more also for uh, for next year. So I'm. I'm going to do everything we can to sign Roman because he wants to be here and we want him to be here. There's a, a report, David, I guess, that the last three years of, of Matt's contract, I think, no movement clause. Is, is that accurate? And I guess if so, that's something you traditionally haven't done. Why, why in this case? Uh, yeah, a very limited one for the last three years, seven teams. Um, I just uh, this was not my favorite thing to give in a negotiation, but we did. Same thing with the signing bonus money, David? Uh, we did a little bit of that with Ryan Ellis last year. Uh, uh, again, you, you can come to any conclusion that you, you want as to you know, what the contract should have been or what have you. I think you know, offering up some signing bonus certainly helped us make the deal at uh, $8 million. I may have touched on it, but so do you see this basically as, as kind of an end to, to free agency for you guys? If, if, or, or is it more likely to, to come here? No, I do. I, as I sit here right now, I do, but don't ever hold me to that because you're, as our scouts are all in the other room and we're just trying to pay attention to what everybody's getting or not getting and see if there might be something else that could be out there. But in terms of having numbers, I mean, we've got two goalies, we've got eight NHL defensemen, we've got 15 NHL forwards, so it's probably more likely to be a trade than a, an acquisition, if you will. Generally speaking, David, what do you think about seeing an offer sheet in the NHL for the first time today in a long time? Well, we've gone, we've gone through that our, ourselves. Uh, and it, wasn't, uh, it wasn't very comfortable. It wasn't, uh, wasn't fun for anybody all the way up to our, our ownership uh, group. Um, it's, it's part of the CBA, so I, I can't say that it's, you know, it's not good or what have you. It's Montreal's trying to improve their, their, their team. And you know, Carolina now has to make a decision just like we had to make a decision. 